What is going on guys? Today we are covering The Substance, the new hot movie coming out of Khan and Tiff. It is making waves as one of the big indie films. But first, let's do a little disclaimer. The Culture Wave Media Network is approaching 400 subscribers, so we would really appreciate any other attention you could give us. Share our page. We love to keep this thing going. We're approaching 200 episodes now. Everybody has been super hyped to share these reviews with you guys and festival award season is also some of our favorite time of year we also are going to be doing a non-spoiler review of this film so you have been warned this is a spoiler heavy review and i am with my other co-host today vinnie albano how you hello, doing hello i'm doing good i'm excited as hell to talk about this film dude this movie man i <laughs> i wish i had a word mm. to describe it so let's just leave it at the title for now, the, the substance. That's all yeah. it is. There is substance of everything in this movie. I mean, it's hard to boil it down to a clean description of this movie. But, I mean, you have a great cast involved. You have Demi Moore, Mark mm. Qualley, Dennis Quaid, mm. I thought was a pretty big curveball of an extra person to throw into this movie because it didn't seem like his type of film at first. He also did Reagan this year, so it was like a polar opposite movie. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, but then you have uh, fresh director Coralie Farrier, mm. who has had great success so far with her career. This film took home the Cannes Screenplay Award for Best Screenplay. And that's the only thing I knew about this movie going into it. So I was very, very surprised by what had happened in this yeah. movie. I yeah. mean, I knew it was going to be a whirlwind of emotion, but can you describe what your reaction was when you walked out of the theater? What was mm. your, your type of uh, feeling? <laughs> yeah, so I went into this practically blind. Like, mm. I knew nothing. I haven't seen Carly Lay's uh, previous film, Revenge. Uh, really, the first time I heard of it was when you guys were planning this review mm -hmm. and uh darian was like hey do you want to see the substance i'm like yeah I, I don't know what it's about but i'll see it and i was so pleasantly pleasantly in used lightly because it is a <laughs> it is such a cringe inducing and squeamish experience but mm -hmm. one of the best experiences i've had going into a movie blind ever mm -hmm. i think that it amplified because me not knowing it i was so surprised and surprised and bombastic is going to be the words that i'm probably going to repeat a lot through this this review because that was the initial reaction i had coming out of this theater yeah. it was just so bombastic in every way and we're talking spoilers so it is just it it's disgusting in all the right ways mm -hmm. you know it has some really great social critique it has some great uh, just commentary and messaging while also being an excellent body horror film in almost every element yeah yeah do you want to take us through the the first part of the movie and how we kind of get started on the film yeah yeah so we start off uh with our main character elizabeth sparkle you know she's a oscar award winning but then she gets uh she's about 50 now she's uh kind of hitting this almost like midlife crisis because people the industry doesn't want her you know she's now a, 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 a has like a dance show uh and th because she's kind of hitting this this older age these executives are like wow you are not i, I mean to put it bluntly you know you're not eye candy to us yeah and to that she gets in a car crash which the uh nurse assistant uh, uh gives her a, a clue to a very interesting little like almost underground medical surface which called the substance hence the name of the film mm -hmm. to which when she goes on this substance she creates a younger clone out of her body yeah uh who's played by margaret qualley and it is just it is just a crazy you know <laughs> it's just like i can't even like it's hard to put into words <laughs> almost you know it's just an absolute crazy experience you know of demi moore and margaret qualley technically being the same person but yeah two different bodies and then the duality between them mm -hmm. and how her psyche is just 
falling apart throughout all of this and how then it ends up affecting everything around her yeah yeah i I think like to go off of what you were saying we also talked about this off camera but Hmm. they use this vessel Hmm. of um you know the margaret qualley character as the better version of yourself and that's what she's out to do is she's Hmm. like i want to keep my career going I want a clone, but also a better enhanced version of myself. And that's as they ad- advertise it to. So it's not ideal that someone is a little greedy to keep this going. That it ends up in her hands because she's using this as a device to keep her career going, but also is forced into that situation because of the, the spotlight that she's in and the toxic environment that they have put on her. So she knows that she's going to quickly fade away in Hollywood in mm. this type of environment if she doesn't do it. So she takes drastic measures. And, um, you know, I, I also feel like what you were saying too, is this film highlights that toxic environment for femininity mm. and the film at its core is about how females especially in the entertainment industry are forced into boxes and labels and eye candy and they are treated as such they are treated as punching bags of meat Hmm. and that's not fair to anybody so we see the effects that that has on her psyche especially um margaret's character when she begins to get that acclaim and that is treated as the hot new thing in town she gets all that attraction and she can't let that go either so she decides to cast out Demi Moore Hmm. and isolate her because she's the old thing. And she even pushes that away. So I think it's really compelling that they set this sci-fi up in a structure around what could have been a drama, but they Hmm. decided to use sci-fi elements to enhance that narrative and that theme. So like the film just goes on this tightrope act of very dark subject matter because like it's very hard to watch somebody get degraded and you know go through these violent experiences and then there is the satirical side of like dennis quaid who is you know just brushing off all these experiences he's used to this lifestyle he's just treating this as like a frivolous thing of like oh we'll just get another girl like whatever like Mm. this always works out for us so it, it has this crazy dark humor about it and i really liked it for that reason and i think without the horror bits too like if you had if you took out the graphic bits and like the gore and the blood the movie could stand alone in itself yeah. as like yeah. an art film in that way so i really commend uh Coralie for her direction on the movie and she obviously knew how to tell the story so um the film is also made 1.3 million so far as of this recording It's had a very successful opening weekend for just an indie film. You know, this Mm. is something that came out of Khan and some people don't know if it's going to have the success that it will as like foreign audiences. Mm. So I think it's um, doing well for itself. It's already being advertised as this like bombshell, crazy, bombastic, you know, horror movie. And people are getting into the buzz um, what was your theater like when you walked out of it? <laughs> yeah, so I personally, I mean, you already know from what I've been saying, mm-hmm. love the film. Yeah, I think the film is a tough pill to swallow for a lot of audiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of general audiences are not going to like it. I mean, just from body horror alone, not yeah. a lot of general audiences are going to, you know, eat that up. Uh, so I actually had people coming out of the theater saying, this is the worst movie they've ever seen. I heard a woman say that as I was was walking out. Uh, but I think a lot of people are going to love this film. I mean, talk about wearing influences on, on your, uh, the film wears its influence on, on its sleeve, you know? And what I'm saying about this is you mentioned how, this could stand as a as a normal art film, but through the lens of sci-fi and body horror, it almost amplifies it. And I think mm. that's what I love about this genre so much is that if you do love body horror and you do love, uh, you know, films that have deeper messaging, 
that's what body horror is really for. Like I think of Cronenberg and there's a lot of Cronenberg influence here mm. of just taking a uh, subject matter and using, you know, horror is almost the best genre to amplify that message and really, really get in your audience's head about a certain message or subject matter. Uh, and just kind of piggybacking off of your previous thought of how you brought up, um, the the feminist angle of the film and i really appreciate this film as it it shows you uh in a in a satirical sense but in a in a real sense the exploitation of of the woman's body image within yeah. corporatism and within kind of corporate america and and obviously just the industry as a whole and it is this is a tragic film it's a tragedy uh but she does such a great job balancing all these different elements. Uh, and yeah. 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 That's good much. yeah I, I think that's a great point. And I, I even wonder too, that, you know, because you had reactions of people coming out of the theater and they yeah. were saying it's the worst movie they've ever seen. I think it's like half and half, like American audiences. This is like, you know, everything's in American or English language hmm. and stuff in this movie, but, um i feel like a lot of american horror or it's like slasher movies or it's very like mystery who is the killer that kind of like cookie cutter oh, plot whoa we had our own horror story right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no we're good um the uh i feel like american audiences are so conditioned and desensitized to that in a horror film so when they go into something and they're like oh this is a horror movie and yeah. then they have these challenging themes brought up they're not necessarily ready for that you know mm. like i feel like the themes alone were a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people and then you have the uh the graphic side of it as well so i think that that's like kind of where they're they're not ready for that yet in a lot of ways the general audience i know you and i like ate this up because of what they presented to us but yeah I think a lot of people are used to the easy side of horror and how it's just going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a killer. It's going to be someone gets locked inside of a house. How do we get out? Like we've seen that before. So that's why I, I like appreciated how fresh of a take this was hmm. and a different angle to, like you said, amplifying the, the using horror as the amplification of the theme is something that, like should be done more articulately lately because the old horror is is like in my mind dying out a little bit i think it's even like westerns as a genre you know like we've mm. seen the good guy save the girl in a western like we've seen that side of it so what else can you do in this genre that amplifies the narrative i think that's a good good great point um and i just feel like adding the satire adding the gore it it really like you don't know when to laugh in this movie because it's so messed up like yeah. even even the camera work like when margaret is doing her show and there's just so much camera work fixated on her body like there was a point i was like oh man i get it like like i understand what you're trying to do like like a message received you know like yeah. Yeah. so there was a point i was like how much longer do i have to look at this and i think that was entirely the point by the filmmaker was just like if this is exploitation, they're going to go hard at it with that. And then mm -hmm. like how degrading it is that, you know, share like, and then in the back of our mind, there are the shareholders. They're like literally gawking at this girl. Like they can't yeah. get her off her mind. They're like fixated on her. They're just looking at every bit of her body image, what it will do for their financial interests. Mm. And that's it. You know, like that's, that's the painted morality of those people and it's very horrible for that so they when it plays into the greed of that too and vanity and like margaret is like i'm gonna be on the new year's eve show i have to get back i have to get back yeah oh my god i'm gonna miss this this is my what my life has been leading up to there's and then demi is like trying to keep her image going so there's so many great elements of symbolism that are really important in this film and worth the watch so, but now that we've covered the feminist angle and the symbolism angle, 
I think we should go into uh, some memorable scenes, especially with the graphic side of it. Mm -hmm. I know like for me, the first scene you were talking about this too, the first scene where she takes the injection Hmm. and um the activator it comes out you know yeah, like yeah. that was that was rough to hmm. watch i was like yo this is this is cringy so what would yeah. you think of that yeah it was it was awesome i mean shout yeah. out to the makeup department i mean hmm. i'm gonna bring them up now but the makeup and the visual effects in this film even like the little visual effects like there's some shots where there's just uh cameras going in cameras going out and like going through margaret qualley's hair at one point and mm -hmm. just a little stuff like that but that scene was the first scene where i was like i just i immediately locked into the film because at mm -hmm. first uh, like i showed up uh you know they had like 20 minutes of trailers i showed up pretty late like i literally i was lucky enough not to miss any of the film yeah. but i showed up and sat down right as the uh, distributor like titles uh, and like the studio film titles were 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 showing on the screen before the film actually started. Uh, so I was like, you know, I was you know, I was a little, I was like kind of all over the place. I'm rushing in my seat, oh, oh, right? I'm like, it's it took me a little moment to try to lock into the film, yeah. but once that scene happened, I was locked in. Mm. I was absolutely captivated, and it's just such a guttural. And like so disgusting of just you like her spine just like pops. Yeah, just like imagining open. that. Yeah, yeah. Physically, like having like, oh, she just rolls out of a spot. I was like, yo, yeah. man, that's messed up. And then the, even the the thing with the eye, like for some reason that really bothered me too. Where it was just like imagining like an eye splitting. And creating a cl like because they felt that you felt the physical cloning actually happening mm. in the body because of those little images and hints. So you're like, yeah. oh, just imagining like literally somebody being formed inside of you and falling out is is crazy. Yeah, like that's yeah. insane. And then to visually do it like that is nuts. But like, yeah, yeah. you can keep going too. And, and and it's it's so. I mean, the best word to describe it too, just from like. A filmmaking perspective it's so cool mm. it's such cool visuals like it's impressive like you mentioned the eye like that was like oh that was it was so interesting and yeah. i think that's another reason why i love this film so much is that it's unique and it's it's we don't see this a lot especially right. in films that are you know this is a wide release this is a gonna you know i saw this in at an amc this is not like a it's artsy don't get me wrong like it played at cans and it won best screenplay as you said at cans but it's not like a super indie b movie that is right just kind of goes to streaming and then is like a hidden gem no this is this is this is this is cool like i don't mm -hmm. see this often in big release theaters and it's so unique uh, i also want to mention the other scene jumping right to the end because yeah, the yeah, ending yeah. is crazy mm -hmm. and it's so it's sad honestly you know this is a tragic tale and the speaking of eyes when her, oh my gosh they become the monster yeah and the eye becomes like pops out a breast and, oh yeah and yeah. it's just and then starts like the the audience member slashes the head off of the monster it grows back. There's blood squirting everywhere. Oh my god! What just bombastic and outright disgusting? Just makeup and and, and just everything involved within the elements there. Just yeah, dude. And then and then like they have that satire of her like putting on the dress and like the earring like up here in like the other arm and the yeah. other the other head. You know, there's like and then there's that one head that's like ah, <laughs> like yeah. trying to breathe. Yeah, and then it was. But it was so messed up because you're like watching this horrible monster and it felt like the Frankenstein ending where like a monster is exposed to the world where she's on stage and like she's in the spotlight and they're like, what is that? Like that kind of thing. Hmm. And then the whole room is engulfed in blood. The monster is diluted down to a pile of mush. And then I yeah. thought that the ending was uh very fitting you know like how she ends up back on the star i thought that was a really nice tie-in and bookended to the movie because it starts with you know 
her rise to fame on her star, hmm. how it cracks over time. I thought that was a great visual image too. Just with a simple star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you have her, you know, becoming this hot sensation on Hollywood and there's pictures being taken around the star and then the star is breaking over time. So you understand already that people have long forgotten about this person just yeah. without jumping into the story. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about like just the concept that, you know, if you don't recharge and switch in seven days that, you know, it starts to take the life off of the initial, initial person. Um, I thought that was crazy, you know, like, and then she starts to deteriorate it happens in her finger. It's and then it happens a little bit in her face. And then when it, continues to happen and margaret qualley is getting greedy hmm. and then you see her just injecting injecting inject like and then the back of her spine like just gets nastier yeah. scabbier like gross and then you you're just imagining like this fake fluid that's coming like it was just yeah the fact that they give you little hints of the science behind it but they don't have to fully explain it i think that's what i love the most too is they let your imagination wander to the horror in the science, you know, like, so then you're wondering what is this woman going to look like when we get back to her and Margaret finally has a crash because she's gone so long without the fluid, but she's drained like, what was it? Like three months worth yeah. of fluid out. Yeah. So, and then she goes back and then Demi Moore is, is completely decrepit, you know, like, and then she comes out of the room. The guy is, um, in bed with Margaret, Margaret. And then <laughs> yeah. he's ch she's chasing him down the hall. That whole ordeal happens, but for the makeup and the image of being so directed at the narrative, I think that was more compelling than just having, Oh, there's a monster in the basement. You know, like it's like, it's not like a Goonie situation where it's yeah. like, Oh, there's this old woman in the basement. She looks disgusting. It was yeah, yeah, very informed the narrative of, you know, like, Oh my God, how could she let this go on for so long? How could she suck the life out of this person hmm. for so long? So you're imagining that. And then what is she going to do when she wakes up and she's horrible? So yeah, I love yeah. that part. Yeah, I thought that was very cool. Yeah, and and you mentioned the the spinal fluid. I I was having a tough time. I was trying to bring up the makeup department on my phone, but I was having a tough time looking it up. Uh, but shout out to the makeup because yeah. it's almost like uh less is more sometimes, right? Yeah. Like you know, there's some great. We mentioned the last scene, how it's blood everywhere, great makeup. But one of my favorite, most cringe-inducing parts was the spinal fluid part where, like, that little yeah. scab on her spine begins to, like, just get more purple and, like, yeah. ooze out puss and shit. And oh, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. oh, that's <laughs> fucking nasty. Sorry, I keep hitting this mic. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely nasty. But, yeah. like how good like chat like everyone who worked on that just oh my incredible incredible yeah because i think that might be one of the like i said the most cringe inducing part of the film i i like now that we're on this train of thought yeah i really like when you know demi moore's becomes this just the the final form i guess you could say right mm -hmm. and it's like absolutely decrepit in every way and I find it very interesting now the, the scene, the duality of the character and how she brings back out her portrait mm. and how then they, I mentioned it before, how they're like the same character, but now she's having that like psychological split where she's yeah. forgetting that she's one and she thinks that she's two separate people. Yeah. Right. I... I don't know if you wanted to comment on any of that, but I just, I thought that part was so powerful. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of moments like that too in the film with yeah. like even uh, early and then probably like midway through the movie where she's doing like, she's just gouging herself. She's eating a lot. And then yeah. uh, Margaret wakes up and she's like, how could you do this? You know, like this is disgusting because hmm. it's all to that theme of body image too. So it's, it's like, how could you, try and you know change your image and how could you like 
risk that like that's what she's mm. kind of saying so i love that and then there's even moments too where uh the caller on the phone is like you want to quit you can quit and she's and then he's like but you're not gonna be able to go back like that kind of thing and she's yeah. like i don't know like in her head she's like i don't know this this has been working out like technically because she's working she's like a sensation so she like is given so many opportunities to stop i think it just like i think if it also poses the question to the audience like if you were given a chance and you were like 80 years old and you could be your younger self a greedy person would probably take that again you know like and she's because her fixation her personality trait is so centered around vanity she's bound to take that you know yeah. like yeah she's she's like i have to do this because i can't continue as myself i'm aging out of this people don't want me anymore i'm feeling discarded as trash i have to use this this is the only way like or, or else i won't be able to live with myself i think that's like a lot of the message which is really disheartening because a lot of people do go through that oh, in yeah. the entertainment industry it's even like in babylon when brad pitt is like talking with gene smart and she's like there's always going to be another one of you you know like there's always going to be another star so it's mm -hmm. that really toxic environment of hollywood you know they put on this sense of the torch will always get passed you have to stay hot while you can and then you're done like and then they move on so it it it's using that message exaggerating it with horror very important to be talking about that message too and understanding what that spotlight effect can have and yeah i, I yeah. think it's really like the core of the story is her psychology to to just like keep going and it's it it turns from like an honorable pursuit almost to like greed at some point because she sees the effects of it she knows it's killing her basically she could stop but then it's kind of like greed at that point where mm. she's like i know i want to do this like i'm making the conscious effort so yeah yeah, yeah no i 100 percent agree mm. uh, i want to actually go back to <clears throat> sorry excuse me uh one of your previous thoughts where you said how the film leaves a lot up to your imagination how that you know amplifies the horror and i think it is such a um it is such a what's the word compliment to the script because mm -hmm. the script itself is quite simple you know in in the sense that there's not there's no like big monologues there's no big dialogue scenes the dialogue is kept very tight for a two hour and 20 minute film there's long sequences without any dialogue yeah and i think it amplifies a film like this right because it, it's it's just focusing purely on the visuals and and then on top of that you know you're never bored because yeah the film within its specifically its sound design and its editing mm -hmm. is so bombastic like right. when you whenever there's not any dialogue it's like freaking like the slobbering of someone eating yeah. or like a boom pop boom pop tick, yeah yeah right and uh, i think that it's almost like a music i don't know if, if uh uh Pochoua, is that her name or for gay for 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 y'all for i'm forgetting yeah. i pronounced it right in the beginning and now i'm i'm blanking yeah yeah um corley yeah corley yeah. uh i don't know if she had any experience with music videos but i almost like the film felt like a music video almost mm. in a compliment in a, in a yeah. good way um i also want to talk about kind of moving on the influences of the film there is yeah. a lot of kubrick yeah 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 there's a lot of kubrick like the uh, the studio's hallway is like right stripped the right shining. out of the shining yeah. same with the bathroom yeah yeah and i even saw like a little bit of possession like zulawinski's possession which i love that film mm. and that's another great body horror film and i just it's so i like that i like that i think it's it's almost uh in a tarantino way you know like stealing but it, it's this uh artistic cycle that happens within yeah. within the medium yeah it's just paying tribute to like you know these past great horror movies too and, yeah. and like yeah. like those kind of define the genre in that era and you know what 
people would try and do themselves in horror too. So it was just a nice little like Easter egg of, of just how it resembles that environment. But like even the, uh, the physical side of like the shining with the carpet and with, you know, the reds in the bathroom and stuff, it, it gives you a very dangerous feeling like something is super uneasy about this environment. So that's kind of reflective mm. of the studio too. Like it's oh yeah, very villainous. Like, Dennis Quaid is a villain. He's in this like almost evil lair in his office too. Like he's surrounded yeah. by guys. Like Spoken he's running the show. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's like you can tell that he is like the douchebag mogul, and this studio is not meant for positive views. Like the only mm. things that they hang on the walls are the image of their next big thing. So yeah. like Demi has all of her stuff over like 30, 40 years. And then when she leaves, it's it's Margaret. It's her turn. She sees that it's a symbolism technique. It's very simple but very effective, oh, you yeah. know, because it's it goes to those things we're talking about. So yeah, like when you have an element from The Shining, an element from Possession, like it only further deepens the narrative. And then it's also like in art films like that, they they let the audience like interpret it too. Like, Oh, why did they do the shining? Is it like this part in the shining or that kind of thing? So that's like a little sprinkle of interpretation too. Mm, yeah, and yeah. you don't have to have every answer explained. Like even the, um, the pickups too, they have four, like, well, no, not four. They have like at least like 20 boxes on the wall. And you see that she's like, what, 53 or something? Like number 53. Yeah, 503. Yeah, yeah. 503. And, and then like you see other people are picking this up. So you're like, I wonder who else is picking it up. Like mm. this is actually rolling out somewhere. Like something else is happening. So mm. you're imagining these other circumstances for other people. And then like I, I'm convinced that some of the best horror are the answers that we don't always know mm. or like paranoia. Like, oh my gosh, what is about to happen? Like when you really don't know when something's going to happen or you're filling in the dots and that suspense too it's like really compelling horror i think you know like i so this film has loads of that but um yeah just wrapping up do you have any other final thoughts about yeah. the film uh not really just i talked about how how bombastic the sound design is and the mm. ending which i think goes a long way for a film like this but i 100 percent agree with that last point you made of like that's where horror really lies it's not about it's a, it's about what you don't know that's hiding in the shadows rather yeah. than what you do know is hiding in the shadows you know what I mean? um yeah film is great film is just so good i also real quick last thought actually the scene the fight scene when uh demi moore and then margaret quali they both Re, like gain consciousness and the yeah. two body and then they fight each other fight margaret quali just goes absolutely ballistic on yeah. demi moore that was such a brutal and intense scene i i think genuinely like it, it's uh it's just great action yeah in a way right like yeah just i just want to shout that scene out because it's yeah. great like it's it's a movie where you're not expecting action necessarily so i think that was yeah. another reason the scene was so great is like you're wondering maybe like throughout the movie like i was wondering hmm. oh are they both gonna wake up at the same time is something gonna happen like what will happen in that situation and it was at the the climax of the movie so you know when in, when <laughs> when people are getting kicked around like that you didn't think that was gonna happen in this type of movie you thought yeah. that they were just like fight it out but yeah, so those those like little elements in a film like this are very surprising mm. because it, it was very drama centric and thriller centric um, the whole way through. So and then they have that little bit of it. And that was a great part, too. And and she like it's all like crippled and decrepit and yeah. she just gets like absolutely messed up. So yeah. and yeah. then Margaret is just on a mission of like the greediness, you know, the yeah. rest of the way. Yeah. So. I thought that was interesting. And then the separation of when when she dies, when the when Demi dies, Margaret is going to like de deteriorate too. So she takes that other injection. I thought that was very mm. creative too. Yeah. Like they set up the rules of the world very simply, like you said, but it was all playing against itself in 
um conflict with the with the other like yeah. demi and margaret like they orchestrated those lines very well so i think that's what makes this film work oh but yeah yeah you want to give a score yeah yeah i'm gonna give the substance a solid nine nice yeah. okay yeah, yeah, yeah i'm gonna give it a like an 8.5 out of okay. 10 and i think uh my only note I don't like it's it's hard to have like a note you know like trying to interpret someone else's work but yeah if i think that the film was like like 15 minutes too long or something like just just the pacing of it towards the middle maybe got a little slower but mm -hmm. it was still it worked it was effective i just think that it could have been uh condensed and tighter a little bit in the middle to get to the climax yeah but i don't think it was bad by any means so mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it was a great movie. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in on this episode of the podcast. We have a lot more stuff coming your way. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like our video. We are doing a lot of festival coverage still. We had Indie Street Film Festival a couple months ago, and we are about to do the Montclair Film Festival in October. So we can't wait to collaborate with them. We're going to have lots of podcasts, hopefully some more interviews with celebrities or filmmakers at the festival. We love to do some more stuff in that regard. Um, so yeah, be sure to follow us on that journey. We are really close to 400 subscribers. And like I said, we love doing this stuff for you guys. We really appreciate the feedback we've gotten from everybody. Our social media pages are at Cinema Wave Media on Instagram and underscore Culture Wave Media on Instagram. And then we also have Jersey's Finest Podcast that is coming up soon. That is on Instagram at Jersey's Finest Pod. We're going to be covering some new New Jersey talent really soon. And we're excited to do that. But just wrapping up this episode, I'm Zach Miller. And I'm Vinny Albano. And we'll see you next time. This is The Culture.